or tea and we'll be raring to go. We just have a few more people entering. And then we will start the recording. Have you started the recording? We're good to go. Awesome. OK, I think we're we're ready to begin. All right, so we'd like to begin by acknowledging that Prosper Canada is located in Toronto, which is situated upon traditional territories. The territories include the Wendat, Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nations, and the Métis Nation. Toronto is in the Dish with One Spoon territory. The Dish with One Spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, and the Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations and peoples, Europeans and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship and respect. Today, the meeting place of Toronto is still the home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we're grateful to have the opportunity to work in the community on this territory. We invite you to add your own land acknowledgement to the chat if you'd like, as we do have representation uh, today from across Canada. OK, so uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Prosper Canada, I'm going to give you a, a quick overview. We were founded in 1986 and we're a national charity. We're dedicated to expanding economic opportunity for Canadians living in poverty. And we do this through program and policy innovation. We're a national champion uh, for financial empowerment. We work with government, we work with business and community partners, perhaps like yourselves, and we develop and promote financial policies, programs, resources, uh, with the hopes that we can transform lives and foster the prosperity of all Canadians. So what do we have planned for you today on um, this day in Financial Literacy Month? Well, we want to share with you two tools that you can use yourself or with community members to help you to manage money, to save and to reduce debt. So our agenda for today is we're going to sort of welcome you and do a little bit of a warm up. And then I want to give you an overview of the current ex economic situation for Canadians, which, as I'm sure you know, is uh, a little bit bleak these days. Um, we're also going to do a little bit of a review uh, overview of some resources. I want to do a demo for you today of making the most of your money. And Shermeen is going to share with you a booklet called Investing with Interest. And then at the end, if we have some time, we'll do a little bit of a wrap up and some questions as well. So who's guiding you today? Well, you've got the learning and training team from Prosper Canada. So my name is Jenny Bolton. I'm a senior officer at Prosper Canada and joining me is my amazing colleague, Shermeen, who is also uh, a senior officer. So we're going to be taking through you through the presentation today. But of course, before we get started, we want to make sure you're awake and you're raring to go. So we're going to uh, warm you up a little bit uh, in the chat box. If you could please share with us the top one or two money topics that you or your community members are most concerned about currently. So what kinds of money topics are on your mind? So I'm going to look up here in the chat and see what you have to say. Inflation. Oh, yes housing, affordability, food security. You know, it's interesting, you know, it used to be we'd get budgeting or debt or credit cards. I mean, it's things like, yeah, paying for rent and groceries and paying bills and um, seniors living on a fixed income. Absolutely. Um, credit and debt management. Oh, wow. Thank you for all of your, uh, your input here. There's so many debt and housing, the price of everything, right? Inflation, the cost of living. Wow, everybody's, uh, yeah, very, very common themes here today. Rent and food, having enough money to stay in their own home as people age. Yeah, that's a big one. Groceries, all of these things, just not enough money. Supporting children, college, university. Wow, yes. So we certainly uh, have, have quite a list. And, uh, you know, I think all of us, uh, whether it's our own personal lives or the people that we're working with, these are certainly things that uh, are of great concern. So I'm just going to share with you a, a few stats from a recent report that we did. I'm sure none of these are going to be shocking. Um, it's very similar to the list that you uh, just created here. So recently, one of the initiatives that Prosper Canada undertook was a, was a report, and it was called Missing for Those Who Need It Most, Canada's Financial Help Gap. 
was funded by the cooperators. So let's just take a little bit of a, a look at what we discovered. We know that even before the pandemic, Canadians were struggling financially. We can see that by the, the list that you guys just created for us there. And these challenges, they're not new, right? The decline of Canadians' financial health, particularly those on a low income, it's been declining for years, right? The income gap has been widening. But now we're in a bit of a pressure cooker, right? We've got high interest rates, the high cost of living, and we've seen a very steady decline in health, household financial health in Canada. We've got debt levels that are rising. We've got our savings that's declining. And people were very unprepared for the brief emergency, let alone the prolonged economic shutdown, right? So it's had a really big impact on everyone. And if we look at some of the stats, so even before the pandemic, we had 43% of Canadians living paycheck to paycheck. 49% of Canadians lacked enough savings to stay above the poverty line for three months. 31% of Canadians with a low income who have debt, which is about half of them, that was money was going towards debt repayment. And our national savings rate has fallen drastically. In 1998, many of us were able to save about 10% of our income, right, which was always that pay yourself first. Can you put 10% of your income away? Now in uh, 2018 and beyond, it's about 1.49%. So people just don't have the ability to save. And then, of course, the pandemic hit. So since the pandemic, recovery has also been very uneven with low income households even more financially vulnerable than they were before the pandemic. So let's take a look at some of those stats. They're, they're pretty alarming. We've got 63% of Canadians who are very concerned about the ability to even just meet their basic needs. Over half of Canadians with income under 50K say they're in poor or terrible financial shape. And 44% of Canadians are worried their money won't last. And then we have a third of Canadians are short on money at the end of the month compared to 19% in 2019. So it's certainly not a great situation for Canadians. One of the other key findings from this report was around um, the gaps. And one of those gaps is that mainstream financial information. So the guidance and advice that's being given is not often appropriate for people with low incomes, right? It really, it fails to consider their distinct circumstances. And this is problematic for a couple of reasons. If you give them generic financial guidance, it could be potentially harmful, and that's really scary, right? So here's a couple of examples. If you have somebody on social assistance programs, we know that there's some strict saving and asset limits. So if financial advice fails to take these limits into account, it can result in clawbacks or people losing their benefits. With RRSPs, so for middle to high income Canadians, RRSPs are a tax deferral benefit, but they don't work for Canadians with lower incomes because in retirement, as they begin to withdraw from their RRSPs, it can result in clawbacks for retirees with low incomes. So one of the things that we hope to do and what we wanna share with you today, um, how, we, how, how do we try to fill this gap is by creating tools and resources that specifically meet the needs of this group. And that's what we're gonna share with you today. So this year for Financial Literacy Month, the FCAC is encouraging organizations to host events and share resources aimed at helping Canadians understand their finances. And we wanna empower them to manage the money and their debt wisely to save for the future and to really understand their financial rights. So it's a goal to help Canadians build resilience, which you can see from the report findings we just shared is so urgently needed, right? We need to build some resilience. So using this as their inspiration, we wanted to share with you two of our newest tools that support these FCA goals. And we wanna help community members to manage their expenses, manage debt and to manage their savings. So let's uh, let's go take a look at some of the resources that we have available. So the two that we want to share, the first one is an online tool, which we're really excited about, called Making the Most of Your Money. Now, it's located on Trove, and uh, Trove is a consumer-facing platform, and it has a variety of tools and resources that can be used by community members. And the second one that Shermeen will share with you later is called Investing with Interest. And it's a booklet that lives on our Learning Hub, and it has all kinds of other tools and resources on the Hub as well that uh, people can access if they wanna learn more about financial empowerment or access resources to use with the people that you serve. So I'm gonna take you to this tool in just a moment. I'm gonna share it with you. 
All right, can we see it there, Shermeen? All good? Awesome. All right, so this is um, making the most of your money. All right, so this is a free online tool and it's been designed to help individuals and families living on a low income learn in a very accessible way. So we've designed it in a way using plain language, um, all of the information and all of the resources on it are very relevant to circumstances for people living on a low income. One of the great things about it is all of the content is downloadable. Right, so we know that some of the, the people that you may be serving uh, may not have a, a high level of digital literacy. So this is a way that you could just print it off for them to view. Um, and also we've just tried to divide it up in a way that um, makes it sort of easy to, to move through. We've got three different modules, which are also available in French, by the way. Uh, the first two modules uh, talk about income. The first one, maximizing the amount of income that's coming into your household. Of course, we want to minimize what's going out. Uh, and then the third one does a little bit of a deeper dive into all of the topics in modules one and two. So uh, it allows for an individual to uh, seek additional tools and resources on these topics. What we also find is it's a great way for anybody who's maybe working as a frontline practitioner to very easily access tools and resources to share with their clients. So it's being used in that way as well. So how do we get started? Well, we just click on get started. We will start our module. I actually, though, I think I'm going to show you uh, module two to begin with. All right, because this one's going to share with us a little bit about expenses, which is one of the goals of our presentation today to talk about how we can help Canadians living on a low income to manage their expenses. So this is the uh, the menu here on the left hand side, which also allows you to navigate very quickly uh, through the content. So we've made it uh, really easy for people to navigate. And you're going to see we have a, a wide variety of different kinds of of information, including personas or scenarios, uh, people who are living on a low income. So in this case, we have Diane, who's a senior on OAS and GIS, who's struggling to manage her, her monthly expenses. She's uh, using public trans, not able to use public transportation, so using taxis to get her groceries and just how we can maybe help her to reduce some of those expenses. So we have some little tips. Again, very interactive, very easy to use. Here we have an audio clip. So this is a, a person living on a low income and how they're able to save money by cutting down on some of their expenses. Everything again, very accessible. We have the audio transcript available as well. And as we continue to scroll down, you can see we have worksheets that people can use. Uh, again, all downloadable and you can click on those and, and open them up. Something you could do one-on-one -on -one with the client, or you could give them the link for them to work on themselves. Okay, so I want to also show you a little bit of information on paying off debt. So this is going to address the FCAC's goal of helping people to manage debt uh, wisely. So in, in this section as well, we have a variety of resources. I continue to scroll down. We've got the downloadable handouts. We've got some great videos. So this is on the cost of credit. All of these are also on our Prosper Canada YouTube channel as well. We have different examples of debt. And again, very interactive. Some warnings on things like payday loans and pawn shops. OK, and again, different scenarios, a way to make a debt repayment plan. OK, and things like, of course, stopping to use credit, collecting debt information. And uh, a handout on how you can calculate all that you owe. All right, so there's lots of different things on all the different topics. Um, actually, one other thing I want to share with you is our third module which is additional resources. So if you think about some of the, the topics that you put in the chat uh, earlier at the be beginning of our uh, discussion today, hopefully you'll, you'll notice that some of these are actually addressed uh, in this module as well. So here on the left-hand side, we have all of the different topics. So things like budgeting, filing taxes, 
benefits and credits, which um, of course there's some links to our benefits wayfinder. Some of you may be familiar with that tool as well. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, community resources, um, which if I have some time at the end, I think I'll jump back and uh, share that with you as well, uh, just because it's got some great resources to uh, to help people uh, take advantage of things within their own community to help them to reduce their expenses. But the one I wanted to highlight to to start just to stay on topic today was our saving and investing. So if you scroll down, this is set up a little bit differently. So each one has sort of a, a statement, very clear statement of what the learner might want to do. So for example, uh, in this situation, they may want to know about the importance of saving. So they can click on that. So this is divided into savings and investing. So we have two different sections here. Okay, so the importance of saving, when I click on it, it will take me to a handout. This one is on the importance of saving. Uh, sometimes the picture shows up there. The odd time it doesn't show up for me. It's going to be difficult today. Um, so you'll see that there's sometimes links to handouts or there could also be links to other websites. So in this situation, we've got a link to the Ontario Securities Commission website on investing fundamentals. So it's a really convenient place to uh, access information quickly. You know, if I want to learn how to save for my child's education, if I want to learn how to save for retirement, it will download uh, some resources for me. Uh, so as I mentioned, I think I have a quick bit of time here. I wanted to just show you uh, my favorite one, which is on um, community resources. And it's in uh, module one. And again, it's just um, some really easy to access hotspots that has links. So I know housing came up, for example, in uh, in the chat today when I was asking about some of the topics that people were interested in. So here I could very quickly learn about some of the housing benefits or um, I can also learn about settlement services if I'm new to Canada or how I can go to libraries to to access books and resources. So there's a lot of information uh, packed in here. I will also mention that uh, we do have a recorded webinar that takes you uh, a little bit more deeply into uh, all of the resources available, or I just encourage you to check it out on your own as well. OK, so I'm going to stop sharing and uh, in a moment, um, Charmaine's going to take over, but we're going to do one fun activity. I always want to put you guys to work a little bit too. Um, so she's going to share her our screen and we're going to do a, a quick activity that kind of reflects some of the content. All right, so in this one, uh, this is, of course, um, finding ways to save, and it's the concept of trade-offs. So I'm sure many of you know what a trade-off is, um, but it is ultimately, it's a different way to satisfy a need or a want, right? And it's a way to help us to save money. So the most common example that we always hear uh, is making your own coffee each morning, right? Instead of buying one from Tim Hortons or Starbucks. So we're going to share with you a picture of some of the things that we save money on, and we're going to get you to share with us in the chat some creative ways that uh, we can create a trade-off and save money. The first one, if you can share the first one, Shermeen, is my child needs a new pair of jeans. What can I do instead of buying an expensive brand new pair? So I got to get my chat open here. And uh, I need to see if you guys have some ideas. All right, so what could I do? Yeah, Facebook Marketplace, thrift store. Oh my gosh, I love thrifting so much. <laughs> I'm a big thrift store. Consignment, absolutely. Yeah, secondhand, hand-me-downs, trading. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just uh, connect with friends who have older kids. I used to love that, right? Get a, a bag of clothing that's all new to you. Um, you know, sometimes just trying to repair things a little bit more too, right? Sometimes uh, we, we try to do that. So the, you got the idea. So let's see. Let's try the uh, the next one. All right. So a manicure. So maybe a person says, you know, beauty is important to me. I like to look good to feel good. How can I save money instead of getting a manicure and still have nice, ma nice ma nails? I can't even speak today. Uh, yeah, present for a holiday or birthday, right? Yeah, it's it's a treat. Beauty schools. Oh, I like that one. Free manicures, perhaps. Learn how to do it yourself, right? 
have a spa night with friends. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Beauty schools. That's a good one. Buy the kit yourself, all of those kinds of things, right? So I can still have my nails looking good. I don't have to spend all that money and uh, go to a fancy spa. So that's a great, great trade-offs. Good, good idea. All right, next one. So taking a taxi to the grocery store. Now, we know that sometimes people in rural, rural areas, for example, maybe there's no public transit, right? So what do they do? They might have ability issues. Oh, I, I just saw wear gloves. That was a good one. <laughs> Sorry, back to the nails. That was cute. Um, but to the to the grocery store, right? If I don't have public transit, uh, people sometimes might find that they're taking taxis uh, to get to the grocery store. What could you do instead? Go with a neighbor. Oh, we're getting off so many up here. Shopping online. Yes, I've really got into that during uh, during COVID. Uh, walking if possible, carpooling, all of those great ideas. Yeah, if I walk or take my bike, I get some exercise as well. So these are these are great ideas. Fantastic. Yeah, but it can be certainly expensive. Um, so we can find some ways to reduce books. Books are fantastic, right? Great way to uh, to spend our time and to learn. I love books, but they're expensive. What are some other things I can do? Good old library. Absolutely. Library rental. I love the little libraries in the neighborhoods. We have some in our neighborhood that, you know, the little, the ones you open the, the door as you go for a walk. So sometimes you see that, see that they, yeah, the little free library, that's what they're called. Neighborhood libraries, trading with friends, online books, all those kinds of things can certainly help us to reduce. All right, one more, we got two more actually. Shermeen, give, give us another one. So going out with friends. All right, we know from the pandemic how important social interaction is, right? Like it's really important that we see our friends and, and family, but if everything always re revolves around going out to eat, it can get really expensive. So what happens? My friends wanna go out to eat, what can I suggest instead? Oh, I'm seeing all kinds, meet in a park, potluck. You guys are good, these are awesome. Cook at home and invite people over, game nights potluck in the backyard. Absolutely. Just a coffee. Yeah. Picnic. Awesome. These are really, really great ideas. Thank you so much. Last one. I'm a big movie buff. I want to go and see the latest movie. How can I save money? What can I do? I think this, you know, certainly now with all of the, uh, the apps and things we can, oh, library rental. Yeah. They've got great movies at the library. Great watching online at home, certainly a lot cheaper. On the Tuesday, oh, I miss those Tuesdays. Yeah, right, I used to always, then the coupons, re reward points, that's a good idea. And some cities do have, yeah, $5 theaters, renting at home, all of these are great ideas. So there's there's so many ways that we can still satisfy the needs and wants, right? We can still have an active social life and do all of these great things, uh, but just hopefully find ways to uh, to reduce our costs. So that's great. You guys are awesome. I'm going to uh, pass it over to Shermeen now, who's going to share with us our other resource, which is called Investing with Interest. All right, take it away, Shermeen. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us and playing with us. Uh, it's always lovely to remind ourselves of the simple things, right? Uh, but today, I would like to share with you another resource that we've developed here at Prosper Canada. It's called Investing with Interest. Now we talked a little bit about saving and how the cost of goods and services is of such importance to uh, you know top of mind for Canadians these days. And I know it sounds a bit strange to want to talk about investing in this economic climate, but we need to pay think about the longer picture and the various audiences that we work with. So for example, we may have some of you may be working with newcomers to Canada who may come with some um financial assets that they are able to invest. So it's important for them to know the different products that are available, um, the way they, the fun, uh, financial markets work in Canada uh, and things like that. It's also very important to look at investing because it also does help you unlock some certain uh, benefits. So for example, if you have uh, school going children, um, you can have an RESP, which will help low-income families access the Canadian Canada Learning Bond, which can help them obtain $2,000 of free money towards a child's post-secondary education. So all of these are just examples or ways of uh, being able to uh, understand what your options are. And it's always about that, right? We're about financial empowerment. We want to provide the options and the information to people so they know what they can work towards. 
So this booklet is consists of seven worksheets. It's available in both English and French, and it's available for free download on our learning hub. And I'll show you where in just a moment. But let me break it down for you a little bit. It consists, as I said, seven worksheets, and it takes you through a certain level of, uh, it's like a little journey, if you will. The first uh, worksheets focuses on what do you want to save for. The second one, tracking your income and expenses. The third, are you ready to invest? The fourth, what can you invest in? Where can you get advice? Watch out for investment, frauds and scams. And then finally, we celebrate with the tips for success. So if we want to break that down a little bit, I think this journey is really easy to understand if we think of it as grouping some of these worksheets together. So the first two really help you identify goals and to create a budget uh, that is essential to all money management, uh, as you all know. The, second, uh, the next two worksheets focus on understanding the basics of investing. What is investing? How does one actually make money? What are the risks? What are the concerns? What should we be aware of? The next two focus on the support and protection pieces. Uh, what are your rights? Where can you get more advice? Uh, who can give you advice? Uh, and those kinds of information are available for you. And then the final worksheet is a little celebration. It helps to celebrate our journey, all that we've learned, or if we've started investing, our achievements. There'll be tips for success, but there'll also be moments of reflection so that you can look back to your own investing journey and note where, what you would do differently next time, what you would change, um, and that is always lovely. So today what I'm gonna do is actually show you one worksheet from each one of these three groups and we'll look at it in, in closely. From that first section on setting your goals, I'm actually looking at the budgeting worksheet right here. Um, so each worksheet is actually laid out in a very similar fashion. What you typically would see is that first half of the worksheet focuses on context. So why would we be interested in uh, developing a budget? I'm just gonna zoom in. There we go. So that's the kind of information you'll see. Uh, why we need to budget and also we've listed here a list of documents that'll help you prepare your budget so you have these on hand it's easier to then fill out the budget some people already may have a budgeting template some people may prefer to use an app but just in case you don't have anything we've created a budget worksheet um, for one month it's quite simple what you would be uh, prompted to do is to list all the different sources of income that you may have on this column on the left. And then on the column on the right, you would put in all your major expenses, things like housing expenses, rent, uh, whether you have a mortgage, um, utilities. You would also include things like transportation costs. We've also left a spot for savings because savings are, of course, such an important part of your monthly budget. And then what we'd like to do is to tally up all the income, all the items in that column on the left, and tally up all the expenses, that column on the right. We will subtract the expenses from the income and we get our balance. And that is the number that I'm most interested in for the purposes of this booklet today. So your balance is income minus expenses. And the question is, what do you do with your balance? Well, let's take a look. What should you do with your balance? Let's zoom in. Uh, well, the first thing we do throughout this booklet is we have lots of little prompts. We have questions. We want users to stop, pause, reflect, and think about a few things. So the first question is, have you paid off your debts? If you have not paid off debts, if you have credit card debt, if you have loan repayments, we do encourage you to first go look at those. And we've actually even linked another resource here that you can avail of when you are trying to manage your debt. Now, let's say you don't have any debt or you've paid off your debt. Then what can you do with your balance? Well, that's the second half of the sheet. Uh, we can we suggest that you look at ways of increasing your savings. So as Jenny mentioned, there are really only two ways to do that. You can increase your income or reduce your expenses. Um, increasing your income may be something to look at because perhaps there are benefits out there that you are eligible for, but you have not applied for as, as yet. So we recommend checking the benefits wayfinder out. We've provided the link here and we can therefore see if there's anything out there that you could be getting that you aren't at this moment. We do recommend, and there are these constant little prompts again at the bottom here, update your budget regularly. 
Uh, this will help you be ready for any changes uh, to your income and expenses. All right, we're now going to leave this worksheet behind and pick one from the are you ready to invest and what can you invest in section. I'm picking the are you ready to invest. So here we go. Um, once again, some context setting. And we've done that through an example. So if you have a windfall, if you suddenly have money, how can you save it and how can you invest it? Well, essentially, there are three options. If you have some extra money in your budget, you can just, you know, keep it in a drawer, keep it under your pillow uh, and forget all about it. And that's fine, too. You can also choose to open a savings account in a bank and or a credit union, and you will get a fixed rate of interest on it. The third option is in you can invest your money. Now, how do you decide as a user, as a client, which option, which approach is best for you? And here's what we have helped try to do here in this worksheet. If you look at this is our many questions that we'll be looking at. And I'm a visual learner. I like looking through examples. So let's zoom into this example that we have here. We are looking at an example of three friends. We're calling them friend A, B, and C. Friend A, uh, all three of them inherited $5,000 in a, just inherited it. And they're all wondering what to do with their money. Friend A in, puts it in an old coffee can, sticks in the back of their closet, and forgets all about it. They started off with $5,000. 30 years later, they will now still have $5,000. It's absolutely safe. Uh, you didn't spend it. That was great. But you still have $5,000. Friend B decided to put all their money in um, a savings account. And that is portrayed here. We depict it, it, it using that red uh, line that is you know, very mild incline that you can see. Because the savings account gave them a a steady return of 2% uh, interest annually. So $5,000 invested in year zero ended up with third with uh, sorry $8,000 in 30 years. So that's a little bit of a profit, a little bit of uh, money coming in. And friend C decided to invest their $5,000. You can see it's been a ride. It's been quite the journey. There have been ups and there have been downs. Uh, some of the downs have been very down. Some of the ups have been very up. Um, and you can see that if you stayed with this journey, uh, friend C ended up with $22,000 at the end of 30 years because they managed to average a 5% interest return on that investment. So how do you determine? Are you like a friend A, a B, or a C? Which approach is best suited for you? So what we've tried to do in this worksheet is help you pause, reflect. So by putting in some prompt questions and introducing the key concepts of um, investing. So risk tolerance is probably one of the most important concepts that you have. Uh, you can, this is where you're trying to gauge that if you lost all the money that you invested, uh, you know, how would you feel? Not great, I'm guessing, but can you afford to lose it? So that's what we're trying to establish here. And we've got these prompt questions to help you determine what your threshold may be. Based on your questions, we've put in a low, medium, or a high risk tolerance, and you would then identify where you think you fall. The next con concept to in introduce is your time horizon. Um, this is how quickly do you expect to get returns? Uh, do you need to have money set aside so you can repair your car in three months? Or are you looking to save money for your retirement, uh, which may be 20 years down the road? Uh, so that will vary. And again, some prompt questions. And based on your answers, you would identify if it's short or a long term that you're looking at. And the final concept is your desired return. How much do you want your money to grow? Right. And again, we've got a couple of prompt questions and we've got your low or high uh, expectation there. Now, now that you have some responses, we've got this little matching activity. So depending on your responses, you would determine whether opening a savings account is the best approach for you or investing. Your, if you identify, if you indicated that you have a low risk tolerance, a short time horizon and low desired return, Perhaps at this point, a savings account is the best option for you. 
However, if you have a medium or high risk tolerance, a long time horizon, and a high desired return, you may want to consider investments. Now, remember, we always want to revisit these things because as you do more of this, you may become more confident. Your responses may change. Your risk tolerance may increase. So we always remind people to come back. Now, we will caution you that we don't, we, it's always good to get some support. And that is where our, our next worksheet will focus on as well. But moving on, because I want to show you one worksheet from our support section so you can get advice. But these days, there's so many fraudsters and scammers out there. So I did want to talk to you a little bit about investment frauds and scams. You just can turn around and every day it seems that there's yet another scam out there uh, that people are dealing with. And therefore, um, we've tried to put together here a little bit of information of what you can look for or how you can identify, recognize cyber fraud uh, and then what you can do about it. Uh, so we've got a few you know, suggestions like, if someone is suggesting an investment that just sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If anyone's pressurizing you to buy immediately because otherwise this offer will be gone, uh, pause, take the time, do your research, don't jump in. Um, investors say that they have a hot tip or insider information. You can absolutely ignore that. Um, it, can, it can also land you in some hot water if you uh, take up investor uh, into, uh, inside information. But here's one which I think is just good common sense for day to day. It's not even just about investing. When you receive those emails and attachments and messages from senders, you don't know. Now, these could be attempts to steal your personal information. The messages could contain dangerous files that will access your information. So please do not open any attachments from especially for people you don't know, uh, especially do not share personal information if you do not know them and trust them. So those are some of the examples we would like to share at this point about um, from these worksheets. Uh, we've also incorporated what happens if you are a victim of a fraud or a scam. As I mentioned, this is happening way too often. So we do recommend that you report it to the police, um, that you should also report it to the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre. And we've shared the links for those sites with you here. And then finally, and probably very importantly, is that you should check your financial statements and your credit card statements. Uh, in addition, we do recommend that you call for your a free credit report. There are two organizations in Canada that have this service. One is called Equifax Canada. The other is called TransUnion. Both will give you one free credit report a year. So that means you can get one every six months or so for free. Um, we do suggest that you avail of this, especially if you feel that you may have been defrauded, to just make sure that nothing else has been impacted. Uh, we've again provided the links for those pages right here. And if you notice any transactions that you did not make in your financial statements or your credit card statements or your credit reports, please report them right away. The sooner you're able to report them, the greater the chances that you may be able to get some assistance on those. Or... All right, so I keep talking about this booklet and I'm sure some of you must be wondering, but Jimmy, where is this booklet? Where can I find it? How do I get my hands on it? Well, I have an answer for you there too. It is located on Prosper Canada's Learning Hub. And for that, I need to actually just stop sharing for a moment and share a different, we'll go straight to the browser and, some of you may be familiar with the Prosper Canada Learning Hub, but we have several things on here. So I'm just going to do a quick little walkthrough. Uh, today, I'm showing you resources that are available in uh, this drop down menu over here. And we're looking at toolkits. Investing with interest is a toolkit. All our toolkits are categorized, are grouped together. So we have four on money management. Uh, these range from dealing with debt, investing with interest, managing your money and soaring with savings. When you go inside each one of these booklets, you will see um, a little bit of scrolling required. We have each individual worksheet in English. You can also download the full booklet if that is easier. We have also, as you can see, this, the same things are available in French as well. We have a resource section, which is filled with things like calculators, tools, so you can start doing some math and see whether investing is really a good option for you. Um, I'll come back to the toolkits. You'll see in addition to the money management ones, we have a group on financial empowerment integration and service design. 
We have some on financial tools that you may use with clients. Um, we And we have some that focus specifically on financial topics, asset building, benefits and credits, budgeting and saving, and tax filing. It's almost that time of year again. Um, and in, also on the hub is are our webinars. Just want to show that to you real quick. Because in case some of you are wondering where you can access recording from today and these slides, you will see them here, right here. Uh, this has already moved to past webinar and Jenny will populate this with the recording and the slide deck. So in about the middle of next week, it will be up here if you want to go ahead and access it. Um, and then finally, um, what I'll do is actually stop sharing. And bring you back to our our um, presentation. And just especially for Financial Literacy Month, uh, we do have a couple of special offers we wanted to share with you. Number one is if you're familiar with our Financial Literacy for Facilitators course, it is an online uh, self-directed course uh, nine modules plus a module on facilitation, and we're giving a special 25% off during the month of November. You can use the code FL-25 special when you register. Um, and if you're not familiar with the course and not sure if this is something that would be good for you, we're offering one module for free during the month of November, and you can also access that uh, just to take a sneak peek. And the module that you'll be able to see is the one on saving and investing, just kind of tying it in nicely with what we have shared today. Uh, remember that uh, the Financial Literacy for Facilitators course is available in English and French, and is and you are eligible to receive continuing edit continuing education credits uh, if, if you do uh, sign up and register for these courses. So that is um, uh, all that we're sharing with you today. We do have a couple of, uh, uh, a, few, a little bit of time for questions, though I know Jenny's been answering a lot of queries in the chat. In a few days, you'll be receiving an email from us with today's with the recording from today's webinar, um, the slide deck, and of course, a link to a post webinar survey. We will appreciate if you could take a moment out to complete that for us. It helps us uh, improve um, and bring us bring you webinars of interest in the future. And if you'd like to reach out to Shermi, uh, to Jenny and my or myself, Shermi, you may do so. Here are our contact information, um, and we look forward to hearing from you. And with that, um, I'm going to just stop sharing so that I can look at the chat and see if there are any questions that uh, Jenny's been saving for me. Uh, I don't have any questions for say. I've just shared the uh, the survey uh, in, in the chat. Um, so I'd love it if you would uh, take some time. I do have a, a great suggestion for a uh, other webinar from uh, John sort of explaining Canada's tax uh, income tax system and I've got some resources that I would said I would send to him so um, please reach out and that's the thing you know we have so many resources on so many different topics and you know as mentioned tailored to those living on lower incomes so you know and we we make sure it's very neutral and you know accessible for everyone so we really hope that uh, you take advantage of that oh I've some are asking the cost of the training so oh do you want to share that uh, Shermeen so there is a cost to so the financial literacy uh, normally it's 135.60 and with the 25 percent off it's what I think you told me the other day 101 <laughs> I don't know the exact amount 101 and 70 cents but you can try that free module of course first the savings uh, module and uh you know, of course, the making the most of your money is uh, is a free resource. Most of our resources are free. Just some of our our online courses just uh, have, have a small small amount attached. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to stay on the line if people do have uh, any any questions for us, and and if not, we're going to give you back your time today. And uh, we thank you for uh, all of your your interaction and participation today. Oh, we've got a question here. Do you have a debt calculator? which shows how much it costs to, to make minimum payments. I'm trying to think where that is. We do have some calculators. Shermaine, can you think offhand on that one? Yeah, I, I'm just going to share a link. Uh, okay, perfect. Right, perfect. I'm going to share with you.
CRA offers a one hour. I'm sorry, I'm just reading the chat as well. OK, great. So John was sharing there was a CRA. Oh, no, Sharon, I think was sharing a CRA workshop. Great. If somebody, oh, they put the link in. Thanks. This is a great opportunity to share resources and information. That's what this is all about. It's great. Oh, and somebody is looking for someone from Edmonton. I want to connect and spread knowledge. Great. Can uh, reach out in the chat. That's good. And you've got the calculator, Shermaine, I think. This is actually a tool that says, uh, should you be paying down debt or investing? Um, I don't, uh, I couldn't find one on uh, just a debt calculator, but I do highly recommend that you check out uh, the Get Smarter About Money website, That's which is the one. Ontario Securities Commission uh, resources and tools. Well, I'm going to put in a link for you here. Um, and that way they have tons of um of resources and tools that you can look for. I know it is Ontario, but um, even if you're joining in from a different, you can check the Commission of your own home province, but you can also get a sense of it is here. Um, well, somebody just shared one for a money mentors debt repayment calculator. Wonderful, thank you. This is great. Thank you. Love that. Oh, another one. Do you need any promotion for the need for tax preparation volunteers to increase the number? or support for the CVIT always. Oh, okay, so I think that's a, a an Edmonton. <laughs> Not a question for us. Okay, great. We got some networking if going have, on, which is awesome virtually. That's great. That's the best, right? <laughs> but that does remind me that if you have a resource or a tool that you use um, and that you find valuable in your work, please do share it with us. And we're happy to add it to the Learning Hub so that everybody in this call and others can also avail that amazing resource that it works for you. Yes. Oh, yeah. And FCAC, of course, the, the debt calculator as well. Yeah. So we can maybe add those with the um, email that we send out with the recording. Anything that's come up or any questions that have come up in the chat or any other resources, we'll, uh, we'll add that to the email that goes out as well so that everybody has access to it. So that's fantastic. Well, thank you, everyone. I love that everybody's sharing and uh, uh, and networking a little bit. Oh, another another tool here. OK, great. I'll have to check out that one as well. It's always great to uh, to learn about new tools and resources, right? They're out there and they're so valuable and. Getting the word out is is sometimes uh, it takes a lot of effort, so if we can uh, share things that are working, it's great. Good. All right, well, I'm going to uh, close things down uh, shortly, but please, if you have any other questions, um, as we mentioned, there is the ability to uh, to email us and uh, and reach out if you have any other questions. Oh, we have one more question. A resource for low income financial advice. Uh, yeah, I mean, we don't tend to do anything in terms of advice. It's one of the things that we are we're very cautious about because, um, you know, we're providing tools and resources for uh, frontline practitioners or community uh, organizations. And normally they're not, uh, you know, they're not certified. They're not qualified to be providing any kind of financial advice. So it tends to be, you know, how to find a, a good advisor or, you know, those kinds of things. But, um, you know, certainly reach out to us if may, maybe you can elaborate a little bit more on what you're looking for and we might be able to uh, to help navigate that and, and find something for you. So just give us an email directly and we'll be happy to help. Yeah, nonprofit financial counseling agencies is probably a good way. Yeah, for sure. We've got some connections there if we can help you. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and energy today. We really uh, appreciate you joining us. Uh, I'm going to uh, end our call today and uh, we look forward to hearing uh, more about some of the great resources that you've been using. So thank you and have a wonderful day.